Welcome back to the second part of the post-game press conference after the game Angola against South Sudan. Again, the score 78 to 101. South Sudan this way not only winning the game but also winning a bid to go to the Paris 2024 Olympics. Congratulations, Coach and Kwani on qualifying for the Olympics. Uh, Kwani, let's get your statement on the game and the tournament first. Yeah. Um, first of all, yeah, like you mentioned, the fact that we're going to the Olympics is a <coughs> still a surreal moment. Everyone is still celebrating in there, so you guys kind of took us out early, but we're still going to go back celebrate with them. But um, overall, it was a great game. Uh, you know, Angola never gave up. Uh, they still, even to the last minute, they were still fighting. Um, you know, kudos to Coach Royale and the rest of the coaches for putting a great game plan together, and we just had to stick by it. Um, yeah, they're a very physical team, uh, rebounding, um, running out, hitting some shots. And for us, it was just a matter of staying together and just know that this is all part of the game. And if we just weather the storm, we'll be able to get the win. So that's what happened. Thank you. Coach? Well, first of all, I lost my voice because I continue to yell. But um, I'm so thankful. And I want to give the shout out to my coaching staff, Fortune Solomon, Luol Dang, my high school coach, Joe Montagna, a Joe Dang, Flo, Mandela, Tenney, the medical staff for keeping our guys healthy, Tom, Dr. Jules, uh, man, what a game, what a game. I'm speechless right now, to be quite honest. It's so surreal going to the Olympics. I have nothing to say. Do we have any questions today from the audience? Yes, one over here. Please state your name and the outlet you're working for. Hi, Coach. Congratulations on the win and the ticket going to the Olympics. Um, we all know that uh, South Sudan is facing societal problems and issues, conflicts now. How do this World Cup campaign and the ticket going to the Olympics spark rays of hope for your country. Thank you. This team is a beam of light. Like I keep on saying, every post game, we're bringing unity, camaraderie, love and friendship to this country. And what we did, this, this country's only been independent for 12 years. To do this, for Luol Deng to put this together, this is incredible. This is incredible. Um, my, my players, I take my hat off to my players because they, they trusted us from day one. My coaching staff, we worked hard. We stayed up nights in Tunisia, breaking down film. You know, we were under man and now we're here. We're going to the Olympics. Thank you to the people of South Sudan for staying with us, supporting us. I love this team. Man, this is a great feeling. This is a great feeling. I can't, I, I just, I wish I could bottle this up right now. I saw one more question in the first row. Here, Kevin Chareon for UQWeb from Argentina. Uh, for both of you, congratulations. My national team is not playing here, so I came here not just to work, but also to have some joy. And you and your fans gave me a lot of joy, a lot of uh, happiness. I mean, I was crying today in the Tribune. Um, you play with not only with your brain, but also with passion, with heart, with effort. You are a really amazing team, guys. I want to ask you what this qualification represents for you. Um, I think for us, you know, just even being here uh, in itself is an achievement, a uh, massive achievement. Uh, not only for players, but just obviously, uh, like Coach mentioned before, for our country. Um, you know, when we go out there and play, um, we show a lot of things that what the country is capable of. Uh, first of all, like Coach mentioned, the camaraderie, um, coming together, unity. Um, <clears throat> you know, for us, the reason why we go out there and play with so much passion is that we know each win, you know, takes us closer to you know, showing the world what we're capable of. And every time we win, it's South Sudan basketball, um, you know, it's 
painting the country in a positive image. People are not talking about war, corruption, not talking about, you know, the killings, everything going on, displacement. Um, it's just literally South Sudan basketball all the time, and that's what we try to emulate out there on the court. Um, just trying to show people, yeah, that, you know, we're here, we're capable of doing a lot, and I think with this win, uh, like you mentioned, um, Lul Deng was telling us earlier that South Sudan has never been represented uh, in the Olympics as our first time here, World Cup, creating history. Um, but for the Olympics as well, um, we've had a lot of athletes represent different countries, you know, um, under different flags. And I think for us to be able to do it for the first time um, as a country really means a lot. And that's why we were fighting so hard to be able to get that opportunity. And, you know, right now, I'm sure people are celebrating happy about it, but we've got to go back and put in the work and get ready for it because it's a whole other level now. But we're just very happy and excited to be there. I Thank guess you. our motto is, I got this from my friend. He said, eyes on the prize. Yeah. And I went back with my team and I said, we're this close. We can't look back. We got to stay focused, no distraction. Keep your eyes on the prize. And those guys did that. Kudos to my guys. Um, my name is Dennis Lejubo, uh, MTN TV Plus. Congratulations to you, coach and captain, and to the whole Brightsters. Just two questions and one request for coach. Um, uh, Angola was physical. Uh, they have big men. They have good shooters, uh, good point guards. What did you do uh, to stop them? And then for uh, captain, Angola is ranked fourth. They uh, been giants of Africa for a while. What does it mean to you to actually beat them? and uh, actually become a rising giant of Africa. And then for both of you, just a, one last shout out to the people of South Sudan across the world and back at home. Well, <clears throat> our game plan was to throw multiple defenses at uh, Angola. You know, we play zone, we play man, we, we press, you know, we try to take away their shooting. I know number five, he hit, uh, how many threes did he have? Uh, yeah, he was four for 14. I mean, offensive rebound is, is their, their mantra. That's what they are good at. And um, they actually had 25. Um, but my guys just stay with it. We stay composed. It was runs in the game, but we never flinched. We kept on competing. We kept on getting stops. We kept the pace up. You know, our pace is pretty good. When we play fast and we get out, we shoot threes. Um, and those guys just stay with the game plan for 40 minutes. I said, possession by possession, you know, don't take a possession off. Don't get distracted. Don't worry about the score. Keep on playing. And they did that. To the fans of South Sudan, I want to say, well, yeah, South Sudan, we here. <laughs> Number one in Africa, not to brag. Thank you. One more question all the way in the back. My name is Charles Tichimanson from MTN TV Plus. Um, my question is to um, Kwani. Um, um, as the game started, I realized um, it was sort of, I thought it was easy for South Sudan, and it got to a point, and it became, you know, a little tough. I mean, what was your expectation, and what is it that happened in terms of um, the game itself, and what is the learning that you take from this? Yeah. Um, I think, as uh, Dennis mentioned before, you know, Angola is a top four, number four team in Africa, as you mentioned. Um, you know, all the teams that are here, and, you know, deserve to be here. You know, they worked hard to get here. So um, we knew it wasn't going to be an easy, light game. We knew we had to, you know, come out and play hard. And, um, you know, we knew they were going to keep on fighting and fighting. I think for us, like Coach mentioned, we just had to find ways to, um, you know, exploit their weaknesses on offense and defense, uh, find ways to attack them and, you know, just continue to wear them out. Um, you know, at the end, we were able to stop their three-pointers. You know, at the start, they were really aggressive on the offensive rebounds. Um, I think they ended up getting 25, you know, which is not... Um, it's, it, it's, it's hard to win a game if you let a team get 25 offensive rebounds, but we were able to, you know, continue to punch them down the other end, and I think that's literally what uh, turned the game around. But kudos to Angola. They're a really, really good team, a uh, tough team, and... You know, they've been the Giants of Africa for a while, went to numerous World Cups, numerous Olympics. And, you know, for us, it's just trying to learn from teams like that, you know, see what they did, how they got there, and continue to improve, you know, on our end. So we'll take this win and just continue to improve from there. Yes, one more question in the front. Good evening, Coach. 
Good evening, Coach Royal. Ivan from Dagot, Philippines. So I believe you formed this national team in 2013. So what's the secret to forming an Olympic-bound team in just 10 years? You know, I wasn't here from the start. This is my third, going into my third year. Like I will always say, this is Luol Deng's vision. I'm, I'm just a small cog in a machine. And um, I'm just humble for the opportunity to, to, to be able to coach these guys and to inspire these guys. And these guys, I feed off their energy. And um, it's been a great time for me to just help these guys in any capacity, you know, on and off the court. These, these, these players are good people. And at the end of the day, they're high character people. And I'm glad to be a part of this team. I'm glad to be South Sudanese. Hopefully I get my passport soon, but um, um, <laughs> this, is, this has been a humbling journey in my coaching experience. And I've grown, I had heartaches, I had a lot of ebbs and flows, but just continuing to, to grow as a team, to grow as a unit. And it's a great feeling right now to be in this position and um, I'll never take it for granted. Thank you. Final question up here in the front, please. Good evening, everybody. Cesare Mianti from Europe's. Congrats, guys, on such an amazing achievement. Is this the best sporting day of your life to you both? Are you serious? We're going to the Olympics. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> like, the Olympics? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Kwani? No, I still, you know, I think... Literally three years ago when Lul Deng, you know, took over, became the president of the South Sudan Basketball Federation. When we were starting in Nairobi, literally playing on concrete for floor, zone five, I never thought that we would be here. So it's definitely one of the best days ever. Um, one of my best days ever, and I'm sure, you know, we'll continue to celebrate. But, yeah, this is literally <laughs> definitely the ago, best day ever for South Sudan. Sorry, a year ago we were, we were playing out, we were practicing outside with eagles flying around while we were practicing and the, the, the courts were flooded like to go from there to come and play in front of the, these fans in the Philippines and I'm on cloud nine right now it's a great feeling these guys work they persevere they listen it's a great feeling kudos to my guys because without them we wouldn't be standing right here they did everything I asked them to do and now we're reaping the benefits and it's a good feeling so we got to go back to the drawing board, get better, and move this train because it's not stopping. We'll continue to get better. Congratulations again on an incredible campaign. Thank you to you both. This concludes the press conference. Thank you. Thank you.